Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to Something to Consider. Happy New Year. I realize that by the time I post this, it will be at least maybe a week into the new year, but I'm still going to say Happy New Year. <laughs> Even if you listen to this beyond January in whatever season that you are listening to this, I hope you are doing well. In this episode, I am going to be sharing with you all how I feel about owning my desire for a partner. It is something that I have wanted for some time now, but I have hesitated on being more open and honest about that desire. And I think that's because there's been a shift in content and just narratives, at least that I've been absorbing and I've been seeing where when you try to own this desire for a partner, it makes you desperate. And on the one hand, I went from a state of when I did find a potential partner, making that a huge part of my identity and almost losing myself. So then counter, kind of counterbalancing that with this idea of hyper independence and not really needing someone and almost embracing the idea that I may not be married. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of things that are outside of my control. I actually don't know if I'm going to get married. (laughs) I don't know what exactly my future is going to look like in terms of my love life. But I do know that there are things I can do to increase the likelihood of that being my reality. And I feel like I haven't done that to my fullest extent. I feel like I've been more passive about it because I've been afraid to embrace this desire because I've been afraid that if I fail, how that's going to reflect upon me. So it's like on the one hand, I've been afraid of having this desire and looking desperate. And on the other hand, I've been afraid of having this desire and then doing everything I can do and failing. This year, regardless of how scared I am, I'm embracing it. And what it looks like is being intentional with my schedule and with my time to schedule time to go out, to try different things try different things with my friends, try different things on my own. And granted, I've done some of this in some capacity, but it's been more so casual. This is every month I'm doing a certain number of activities. (laughs) And even if that means that I have to do a little bit of research, do a little bit of digging to figure out different things to try out, I'm committing myself to doing that. Because after spending my last birthday alone and just being quite frankly miserable for much of the day and then later on figuring out it was because I wanted to spend that time with someone, I became quite clear that one of my top intentions this year is to be intentional about how I spend my life, how I spend my time and finding a partner. It's something that as I say it, it feels huge in a way. And I think it's because part of it is that I only have so much experience in partnerships. I'm the type of person who has had more of these spurts of dating people versus long stints of dating people. And I'm in my early 30s, just to give some more context here. At this point, we don't say our exact age. I'm in my early 30s. That's all the general public needs to know, okay? (laughs) But as someone who doesn't necessarily have those experiences, I am aware that with any new experience in life, there is an adjustment period. And something else I've been awakening to is that when someone does come in my life, because we are going to speak in wins and, and instead of ifs, when someone does come in my life, there will be an adjustment period for both of us. And for someone like me who has less of that experience, there are things that frankly, I'm afraid, <laughs> I'm afraid of, 
I'm afraid of how I'm going to respond to those things, if I'm going to be equipped to respond. But at the same time, I also feel ready. While I feel afraid, I feel ready. And a large part of me feeling ready is because I have done so much work on myself. Not to be ready for a relationship, but just to be a better person, to be a happier person, to be happier single. I can embrace the idea that I'm happy single and I have a desire for a partner. Those two things can exist. It doesn't have to be either or. And so things like going to therapy for me has been probably one of the biggest game changers because I had a mindset where whenever I would meet someone, they automatically would go on a pedestal. They automatically would be placed, I would place them mentally above me and I would then try to seek that person's approval. And I would do this pretty quickly. It would be within like maybe a few dates that I would make up my mind about this person of of having a mindset of, I want this person, I wanna be in a relationship, I just need to hold on and be on my best behavior until they choose me. Maybe I didn't think about it exactly in those words, but I did think of when it boils, when I boil things down, that is what I feel like was the undercurrent within me was pick me, choose me. I'll do what I need to do to impress you. And even as I say it, you can hear, hopefully, it's exhausting. It's an exhausting thing to try to impress someone else. And also the the very fact that I'm putting someone above me as if anyone is above me besides God. I had to learn through therapy, through reading books, through reading blogs, through absorbing other types of content that those people needed to be knocked off the pedestals. The only way I could actually try to get to know someone for who they are is to see how, see myself equal in them and with each other versus they're up here and I'm below them. And that is something I struggled with for years. It was something that was happening subconsciously subconsciously that I wasn't even aware of. It wasn't until I learned about attachment styles and learning that I had an anxious attachment style that I really got to better understand why I was behaving in certain ways and thus why I was getting certain results. Now I feel like I'm in a space where I have so much of a better, I have so much clarity around what my boundaries are and where certain people begin and I end. And it has allowed me to be less to have to be less controlling and to embrace more uncertainty and to embrace more of the ambiguity of dating because there's a lot of ambiguity of dating. And one of the things that I see quite often when I peruse Reddit, yes, I am a peruser of Reddit is that people will express sentiments of being exhausted in dating. And I can understand that. I was exhausted in dating when I was dating with that mindset of basically having lower self, lower and low self-esteem. It was an exhausting process because I constantly found myself winding myself up, hyper fixated on this one person only to be let down. Now it's at a place where when I'm dating someone, I genuinely just want to get to know them. I don't, there's no pressure. Yes, I do desire marriage and I am dating intentionally. But at the end of the day, I want someone who wants those things with me as well. I'm not interested in forcing anybody into something that they don't have a desire for. Because frankly, even if that were to work, it's not going to sustain itself. My word for, I believe it was 2020, was sustainability. And one of the things that I learned through sustainability is that you have to be willing to be honest about where you're at with things. You have to be willing to be open to saying no to certain things so that you can keep yourself level. And so when it comes to dating, What I've also noticed as a result of working on myself is that when things do falter, it's no longer these blow ups. I used to have I used to have these huge 
Huge is maybe a strong word. But it always used to feel like when things fell apart, like my world was crumbling. And it doesn't mean I'm unaffected now when things do fall apart, but it means that I am able to look at that situation and also experience a form of gratitude. In the situations where I've dated someone since working on myself, and I'm a work in progress like everyone else, y'all. Like, let's let's be clear here. I'm in no way, shape, or form saying that I am perfect, but I have come such a long way, and I feel like I have woken up. I, it, I can't even, I don't think that I have the words to truly articulate how different I feel now that I've been so diligent about working on myself. But in doing so and working on myself and seeing how these situations, when they come to pass, there's much more peace between myself and the person. It's enabled me to date in a way that is more sustainable and a way that I can enjoy. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say dating is super fun, but it is a lot more fun when you're not attached to the outcome. Yes, I desire marriage and partnership, but I... I can also have a moment with someone and that just be the moment. And we don't need to go beyond that. And there's nothing wrong with us not going beyond that. An example of this is I went on a date with a guy a few months ago and we met on a dating app and he seemed friendly enough to meet up with. So we met up pretty quickly, which I appreciated. That is one of the things that can be kind of annoying on these dating apps is when it feels like someone's kind of dragging things out. So we met up and we pretty quickly, I feel like we didn't say this explicitly, but I could sense that we pretty quickly determined this is only going to be a friendship kind of thing. And so we still hung out. I think our date lasted between like two or three hours because the conversation was so good. Even though I, I can only, I'll speak for myself. Even though I was not feeling it in that regard and I got the sense that he wasn't feeling it in that regard, it was just nice to have that kind of conversation with someone. And so it it dissolved like I thought it would. Like he sent me a text the next day referencing something that we had talked about, but that was it. And I didn't find myself mad or upset or feeling like I wasted my time. I just was grateful to have the conversation and to find a new bar to go to because we went and we had drinks in the early evening. And so that is one experience that as small as it may be on like a grand scale of things, it was still an affirming experience for me that like dating doesn't have to be this brutal thing. It does. There are times Things haven't always been perfect. There have been times where things are a little bit more uneasy than they are in that type of situation. Like for instance, being ghosted. There was one guy, I might've done an episode about him where I talked about us having such a great conversation. He fell off, we reconnected, he fell off again. And although that was very disappointing, it was also another situation where it tested my growth because if if there's nothing else that i've learned about growth it's that you can only know if you've grown when you're tested when you're put in those similar situations because you will be when you're put in those similar situations that used to trigger you and you may still feel triggered that's one thing too there was this girl i follow on tiktok and she was sharing how she kind of felt, I don't know if she used the word surprised, but I'm going to say surprised. She felt surprised that in dating someone, in dating someone that she really started to like, that feelings like kind of old triggers and things were coming up. And one of the, the things that I said in her comment section was, I learned through therapy that triggers don't necessarily go away. The feelings behind triggers don't necessarily go away. You just learn through therapy, different tools to use to to cope differently. And so in that situation with this guy who I felt triggered by when he had ghosted me, I, my, I had my growth tested. 
And it was such an, it was another affirming experience for me of how I have grown because I could sit there in all of the triggered state that I was in and choose to respond differently. And that is something that is so empowering if you are someone, and I think we all are, we all have things where we look back and we're like, oh, I wish I would have responded differently to that. So to have that opportunity and to respond differently, it's it's so, I'm going to use the word affirming a lot, apparently. It's so affirming of like, yes, I have done the work, but also this work is working. <laughs> It's not just me out here saying I've done the work and I have it conceptually. No, I have it in practice as well. I can apply this when it's hard. And afterwards, too, I see how fulfilled I feel having done what I said I was going to do, having taken another another path from the one that I've usually taken that is so unfulfilling and sometimes a bit degrading. So in going back to owning my desire for someone, I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. I'm excited to be intentional about the things that maybe before I was kind of casual about. I'm also keeping in mind the reality that to give myself grace There may be times where I actually just don't want to do something. I don't want to go somewhere. And it's going to be okay for me to say, you know what? It's fine. Let's pivot. So while I may have one vision of how I envision this whole thing going, I also want to remind myself to give myself grace through this because this is going to be a bit of a test for me. Putting myself out here in this manner is huge for me for the reasons that I've shared of of swinging from one side of desperation to swinging to another side of hyper independence and trying to find the balance in between that in a way that serves me. So with that, some things to consider. If you are also in this space of desiring someone, how does that manifest in your life? What are the things that you feel like you can do to contribute to achieving what it is you want? Do you potentially need a mindset reset where you remember to focus on the inputs rather than the outputs? And that really speaks to how much we control versus the things that are beyond our control and and focusing more on those things within our control. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening to this episode. Please make sure to rate and to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. I'm happy to hear from you all and get any type of questions or feedback in the comments if you are listening to this on my YouTube channel. And I will talk to you all in my next one.